didn't realise you were there. Greetings. You've caught me doing my research, with the help of that of course, for Tour de Force Tours number 7. And I'm going to take you down to Hastings in East Sussex. So I'm having a, a quick study of the Ordnance Survey map before I go down there. Now you might recognise the place because the old town was used as a set for the television drama Foyle's War. So I'll take you there. Also, we shall visit the boats drawn up on the Shingle Beach and, of course, the fishermen huts, which are very much an iconic feature of the area of the town. Unfortunately, I don't think the Cliff Railway is working today, so I'm going to have to walk up all the way to the top of East Hill and the neighbouring hill, West Hill, where we shall find the castle. And if all goes to plan, I hope I shall be back down onto the beach in time near the pier to photograph the sunset before going home on the train. And talking of trains, as that's the way I'm going, we better not delay. But <laughs> if you excuse me, before we get to that, East Croydon Station. It is one of the busiest in the country. It only has six platforms, and many of the Sussex coast trains stop here, and local ones too. It was cloudy, but that didn't matter. I was confident that the maritime air at Hastings would break up the cloud. I took the EM1 Mark II plus 12 to 100 Pro lens as the main camera, but I used the EM10 Mark II plus the 14 to 42 pancake lens for travelling, as it is not conspicuous, and it came in handy later when I had exhausted the battery in my other camera. Ah, here comes my train. Hastings has a new station since my last visit, and after a bit of sustenance, I quickly made for the beach, because, as predicted, and on time, the cloud parted. A glorious day was in prospect. Obviously, my sundance had worked. Embedded in the shingle is a recent sculpture by local artist Lee Dyer called The Landing, representing the prow of a Norman longboat. It is a valuable addition to Hastings Beach, but would I be forgiven in thinking that its shape, which I like, looks more Viking, especially from a distance, than Norman? Perhaps there were similarities in how their vessels looked. I passed some imposing architecture gracing Pelham Crescent to arrive at the Pleasure Beach, but I resisted the temptation to indulge myself in a bit of fun. It even had a miniature railway, but I was intent on viewing boats, not trains, and the fishermen's huts used to house nets that are a historical backdrop to the town and Grade 2 listed. Provided there isn't any activity, Photographers can wander amongst the boats, but do not touch or move anything. At a safe distance, there is plenty of opportunity to photograph their shapes and vibrant colours. The fishermen's huts are nearby, where I brushed up against one of the locals, no doubt waiting for a feast. These boats are subjects I photograph without apology in high but not exaggerated colours by first saving to roar, so that I can fine-tune my images back at home in Adobe Lightroom, and even change them if my audience think I have gone too far. Off now to the old town, it's just around the corner. This is where Foyle's War was filmed, and it is not hard to see why. The difficulty was getting a shot without people spot the car, and 
Sometimes people suddenly appear in unexpected places. I had to be content in having people and cars, but only at a distance, and no doubt Photoshop could come to my rescue and Lightroom for correcting converging verticals. All Saints Church, as you would expect, is at the end of All Saints Street, and on the other side of town is St. Clement's. Neither were open, and St. Clement's had scaffolding, the photographer's nightmare which I managed to hide. Time to climb some steps, and quite a few. From West Hill there are good views over Hastings, especially the old town, and that is East Hill across the valley, which we visit shortly. There is a castle up here, but it was near closing time, so instead I enjoyed a pot of tea at the cafe. More steps. East Hill is part of Hastings Country Park that extends to Fairlight. It is popular with dog walkers, yet the car park appears to be half a mile away. Hastings folk must be incredibly fit if they climb this hill every day to exercise their dogs. More views of the old town, now of course with the lighting coming from a different direction. This is the fun of landscape photography, and not least when late afternoon adds a glow to the town beneath my feet. I was in no hurry and lingered, as I wanted to time my arrival back at the beach with precision for what I hoped would be a spectacular sunset. I was not disappointed. The ferris wheel acquired an added glow and so did the sculpture, but it meant stopping the lens down a bit to avoid flare. I wasn't sure which way the tide was going, but soon I spotted surface water left by a departing tide that was sufficiently placid for reflections, especially the pier. The nearer I got to it, the patterns created by its supports offered many photo opportunities, including video, by which time I had concluded that the tide was in fact now coming in. I thoroughly enjoyed my visit to Hastings, helped of course by the weather. Despite the fact that the Norman army landed in 1066 at Pevensey, and that the battle took place eight miles away, Hastings will still have much to celebrate in 2066. Unfortunately, I will have to send my apologies for absence, as it is quite likely I will be elsewhere, unless I survive to the eternal age of 122. Maybe by then we shall be broadcasting to eternity?